I'm Pranav Garimella. I'm the Chief Medical Officer at the American Kidney Fund. And today, we'll be talking about IgG4-related disease. IgG4-related disease is a rare immune-mediated condition that causes inflammation and scarring in various body organs. So this is a systemic disease and symptoms for the disease can really vary widely depending on what organs affected, whether it's the kidneys, whether it's the pancreas, or whether it produces tumor-like masses that can sometimes be mistaken for cancers. Sometimes people can have weight loss and other times people may not have any symptoms and this is incidentally picked up on a scan. Because IgG4 is a systemic disease with a spectrum of presentations, the symptoms and the impact of life can be quite variable. Many people actually have the disease for months and may have unexplained symptoms, non-specific symptoms such as fatigue or weight loss. Occasionally they might notice swelling and this can often be mistaken for other conditions. This is why early detection is really key because people can go for months without ever having been diagnosed with IgG4 and even when they do see a physician, the actual diagnosis is often delayed because of how rare the disease is. The kidneys are actually one of the more common organs that are affected in IgG4-related disease. In fact, nearly 25% or one in four patients who have IgG4 disease have some part of their kidneys affected. And the most common condition seen in the kidneys in patients with IgG4 is called tubular interstitial nephritis. In other words, an acute or chronic inflammation within the kidneys that can cause the kidney function to decline. Most often this presents either as a rise in the levels of protein in the urine or a change in their kidney function which is most commonly measured using creatinine. Patients may need a kidney biopsy, patients may need imaging to understand if there is infiltration of these IgG4 cells into the tissue of the kidney and in rare conditions IgG4 kidney disease can actually present as glomerular disease with a lot of protein that may look like what we call membranous disease. If these tumors in the kidney are quite large, it can actually cause obstruction and cause urine to back up and cause acute kidney injury based on the amount of inflammation and fibrosis there is. This just shows you the spectrum of kidney conditions that IgG4 related disease can cause and that's why having a high suspicion is important because depending on what you find, you typically need a kidney biopsy to diagnose it. Imaging can give you a clue, especially if there are multiple tumors and if there are these kind of fibrous tumors in other organs, but a kidney biopsy will show us the presence of plasmacytic cells with uh, IgG4 infiltrates within the kidney, and that really is the hallmark to diagnose IgG4 kidney disease in patients. IgG4-related kidney disease, if detected early, can be treated. Steroids really remain the mainstay of treatment, and a lot of people respond quite well to the steroids. But there is a subset of patients who cannot take steroids or don't respond to them. And in these patients, we have emerging therapeutics that could work. Rituximab is one such drug that can be used. And more recently, we have ineblizumab, which is another monoclonal antibody that has been approved for treating IgG4-related disease. And so advocating to see a specialist, whether it's a rheumatologist, whether it's a kidney doctor, and making sure that your kidney function is checked on a regular basis are really things that patients should be aware of as well.